In this video, we discuss the role of financial accounting standard setters. First of all, standard setters work to develop concepts, rules, guidelines, let's just call it the theory for financial reporting. And what it's trying to do is encourage transparent and truthful reporting. Publicly traded entities must follow the rules and the guidelines set forth by the standard setters. And I just want to take a little aside here. Standard setters are creating um, gap. So they are dealing with the issues to make sure that it's properly represented on the financial statements. In the United States we have the FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board. They promulgate the accounting standards in the United States. The IASB, that's the International Accounting Standards Board, does the same thing but for global accounting standards and they are referred to as IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. A little aside about why we need to understand a little bit about IFRS. First of all, many of our global companies operate subsidiaries outside the United States. So basically the accounting in another country is being done using IFRS. And in order to do a consolidated financial statement, just have one balance sheet for the entire global company, you're going to have to convert the financial statements from IFRS to U.S. GAAP. In addition, we have non-U.S. companies that operate in the United States, and they're doing kind of the opposite. So they're in the U.S., and they're going to roll up their financials into IFRS. Um, if you're working in um, one of those global companies, then you're going to have to be familiar with IFRS. Finally, the SEC does permit the use of IFRS-based financial statements. So if you're listed on a major exchange and you're based in your home country is not in the U.S., you can list it according to IFRS rather than converting it into U.S. GAAP. Another factor is that accountants do spend time outside of the U.S. Um, and this has become such a big deal that now IFRS is partly covered on the, um, the CPA exam. Just to show you how broad IFRS is, the darkest color is where IFRS is required. There's a light orange color in there that's where it's permitted. And you can see there's a little bit of very light peach color, and that's where we don't use IFRS. So US GAAP, look at it. Um, we are using very different from the rest of the world. And just so you have an understanding, US GAAP is extremely technical. It's much more detailed. It provides a lot of industry guidance. And you might think, well, why should we go the extra mile and, and be um, having all these rules? And the answer is this. In the United States, we have what's called a highly litig lit litigious environment. So auditors are trying to do their job and audit the financial statements. They don't want to get sued. So the more detail that's involved in the gap, then the auditors can say, hey, this is the way we're supposed to do it. It's written here down, written down here. So we do it according to that, and it manages that risk of being sued. In other countries, that risk of being sued is not as great. Um, so we'll learn a little bit more about differences between U.S. GAAP and IFRS as we go on throughout this course. So what body sets the accounting standards in the United States? You know it, FASB. And the other one for the international, IASB. Great job.